So today I'd like to talk a little bit about skull lesions from a uh, musculoskeletal standpoint. So, uh, so this is the skull that we're going to be talking about. <clears throat> and there are a lot of differential about lesions in the skull. Uh, metastases, myeloma, uh, histiocytosis, osteomas, interosseous meningiomas, osseous hemangiomas, epidermoid, dermoid cysts, aneurysmal bone cysts, fibrous dysplasia, Paget's disease, and then obviously there are a lot of others. So, uh, Shiv, what do you think of this one? Okay, uh, so it looks like there is a lytic lesion sort of involving the inner table and maybe sort of the di diploic space of the skull. Um, in a five-year-old, okay, and it looks like it's actually a soft tissue mass on the T2. It's, it's sharply defined, but it also is low density, right? Right. Um, so it's sort of heterogeneous on the T2 weighted sequence and T1 sort of iso intense to hyper intense. But it's, but it's not really a lipoma. It's not a lipoma. Okay. Um, five-year-old. Yeah, and a five-year-old EG could potentially look like this. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the end of a granuloma. Okay. This looks very similar. Um, he's in for the granuloma, Langerhans right? yeah. cell. <clears throat> so, Har, what do you think of this one? Okay, twenty-five-year-old now. I see um, kind of a loosened lesion erosing the left femoral, left frontal lobe, and also there's another one in the right anamastic uh, apex, central apex. So multiple loosenedness in, in the skull. And a little bit of uh, expansion here of the bone. So. Mm -hmm. Cortical margin looks like it's kind of intact. Yeah, it can be like um, a fat containing uh, the tumor at the base of the. Yeah. So, so this is another eosinophilic granuloma. Okay. okay. So it's it's fairly common in the in the skull. You can look for it in other areas as well. Typically in kids and young adults. Okay. Is it just that uh, one area, John? Well, this one has three areas, here, here, yeah. and down here. How about the center? There's a the top, top of the, or I, whatever. Uh, I see a lucency in the center, but I don't know where that is. Which are the? Uh, le left upper. Here, there's this one. Yeah, the center and um, posterior. And through here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, it's, it, it, I wonder if it's throughout the whole. In fact, I see more uh, anterior too. Um, are you talking about these things here? Yeah, what are those? Well, that. that that, that's probably just fat in the subcutaneous tissues there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess you're, 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 you're right. I'm, I'm, you hear, hear the sutures coming across there. Uh, all right. But I think I would still get a skeletal series on this patient. Good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Thomas, what do you think of this one? A uh, 61 year old male, masked for 20 years. Uh, so there's a large uh, bony mass from the left mandible and uh, has kind of an osteoid matrix. Uh, so this could be an osteoma of the mandible. Uh, it has kind of a little stalk here, but it comes out and the, the edges are, are con uh, continuous with the cortex of the mandible itself. And yeah, this was an exophytic osteoma. Good.
Okay, 36-year-old woman, eye swelling for seven months. So it looks like there's thickening of sort of the zygomatic area of the left orbit, um, which you can see in fibrous dysplasia. Uh, this, this turned out to be fibrous dysplasia. Okay. This is the same patient, huh? Is it five, five, four, uh, I think this is no, this is a different. Okay. I think this is a different. Okay. okay. Not, let, not let, me, let me see. Wait a second. Right. Okay. Thirty-six-year-old female for seven months. Questioning. Yeah, they're questioning them, yeah. or maybe. Uh, I think this is a different patient. I. I it's a solid. Yeah. I don't know about this being a fibrous dysplasia. Right? Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm sorry. I think it's just the same thing. So, so the, this was read as a CT scan as uh, fibrous dysplasia. Back for an MR scan. You don't usually see that much bone in fibrous dysplasia, do you? Uh, you can see a lot of bony thickening. And uh, the, or, or whatever that is, the abnormal architecture here uh, is uh, consistent with fibrous dysplasia. Yeah, it is okay. I I don't know much about heads. I guess. Yeah, and here's here's the MR scan. <laughs> so I it looks like the looks like there's yeah there's some. I don't think that's bone. It's sort of sort of. Yeah, it looks like there's some sort of mass sort of replacing the zygomatic area and the... Yeah, so what is this? That looks like... Uh, that's a post-contrast T1. So an enhancing... Yeah, okay. So enhancing what area. else can produce hypertrophic bony reaction when we're on the skull? A meningioma, potentially. And here's this soft tissue lesion there. And this turned out to all be meningioma. a reaction to meningioma. Mm -hmm. So, John, you were right. It's not fibrous dysplasia. Uh, well, I, I, I am right sometimes. Yeah. I have drilled some uh, heads, uh, by the way. Yeah. So it's not like I haven't been uh, near the brain. Yeah. So the situation. Um, so, so this is a CT without contrast. Mm -hmm. And so you really can't see the actual lesion which is causing this right in this area uh, this uh, needs, needs to be excised so yeah. uh, because I, I'm sure that eyesight is disturbed here yeah. well, what, what do you ask whether MRI was appropriate or not I mean isn't the CT I know it's not diagnostic but as close to uh, I'd love to see the post-op. Well, with the CT, the people thought this was fibrous dysplasia. This is a common location for fibrous dysplasia. Why was MR done? No, but it's a, it's a progressive, isn't it? Because they weren't sure if it's fibrous dysplasia or not. So they wanted to evaluate the brain uh, and the orbit better. I guess what I'm asking is, if I see this, should I order an MR? It depends upon the clinical setting, but uh, most of the time you're going to want to because you're going to want to look at the neurologic structures around it. Now, if you got in a CT with and without contrast, you would have probably seen an enhancing mass here. And then you would have also got an MR scan because sometimes meningiomas can be multiple. And if you're going to do it in surgery, you'd like to know exactly the, the extent of all the disease before you go in and operate. So this was our reaction to a meningioma. Okay. Just think, just think, I almost became a neurosurgeon. I'm glad I didn't. Oh, you would have had fun with that, John. Uh, seven years of my time. No, no, thank you. It's a 40 year old with a scalp mass and well, there's a lot of thickening of the of the skull. Uh, there's also 
some kind of either soft tissue mass, yeah, extraaxially under that, or I don't know if it's blood or what, and I guess some soft tissue swelling over it or just muscle. I'm not sure, but um, you know, it's like looks like kind of fuzzy bone growing out of there. I, I would wonder if this was. I mean, the age is inappropriate for Ewing's, but it looks an awful lot like Ewing sarcoma. I wonder if there's a primary bone malignancy here. Of some sort. Yeah. Okay, so there's some soft tissue component going through the bone and kind of destroying the bone, yeah. Um, okay, so it's more of the same to the sphenoid. So what do you think this is? Um, my first thought is still some kind of osteosarcoma. It's an osteosarcoma, probably. Well, I would think. Generally, osteosarcoma, you'll get a lot more destruction. This is a very large lesion mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of hypertrophic bone formation rather than destruction of the bone. Mm -hmm. Now, you could also think about fibrous dysplasia, like we saw before, but again, this, this, this is a little bit atypical for fibrous dysplasia, but you can certainly get it in this location. But then the soft tissue mass would make fibrous dysplasia uh, highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. And this is another meningioma which can grow through the bone and actually produce a uh, hypertrophic change like this on mass on either side. This was a meningioma, another meningioma. Okay, Sahar. Okay, 30 year old female who lived mass for three months. It looks like there is a solid vascular mass. I assume it's coming off the lip, as they say. So here are, the, okay. here are the teeth, and here's this lesion coming off the lip. Okay. Oops. And enhancing kind of like heterogeneous mass. Okay. Arising from the lip. Hmm. Skin melanoma. I think there's a spot there. I don't know if that's. That's like a missile that's going there, or? Yeah, so that was that's a right right right. Yeah, and so you can see kind of the vascular appearance. If we go back here, you can see that there's a lot of flow in this, and this is a central area of vascularity here where you see the low signal on MR examination, and they, these are all vessels here, as shown on the ultrasound. And this was a Kepler tumor. <laughs> Thomas, what? How old was that patient? Thirty-two. Thomas. So uh, we have a axial views of the skull with CT, and there is sort of a multi-lobulated cystic or lytic lesion within the. Uh, left frontal. Um, yeah, close to the vertex, extending across the midline. Yeah, it's pretty well circumscribed. And then on uh, sagittal T2 MR. Now, uh, if this were smaller, what would you call it? <clears throat> Let's say this is all you saw. That'd be kind of a non-specific. No, we, we see those a fair amount, and we typically call them arachnoid granulations. Oh, yeah, okay. No, they're rarely, if they're really large like this, and can be symptomatic, but most of them just can Two year Two-year-old male incidental skull mass. So it looks like there's a lytic lesion, sort of peripherally calcified, maybe, of the uh, skull there. And it looks like it's a pretty clean sort of lytic lesion of the right frontal bone. Um, EG again comes to mind. What? EG 
that comes to mind in a young person. Yeah, it's so clean that maybe they've had intervention there. Oh. Hmm. I think this is, well, it looks post-operative, first of all, but the, the bone flap looks like it has fibrous dysplasia in it. You use the mic. Oh, that's not bone. That's not bone. Take off, right? Okay, Sahar. Okay. So there is thickening of the skull, more prominent in the frontal, maybe a little in the parietal lobes. Um, Think of uh, uh, frontal is hyperostosis. So, so, I'm sorry, what'd you call it? Hyperostosis. Yeah, right. Good. Is there a, front, is there a hyperostosis frontalis externa? Is that just horns? What would that be? Uh, the outer skull. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so it can be associated with... <coughs> Okay, uh, Thomas. A 12-year-old male with proptosis. So there's a mass inferior to the right frontal lobe displacing the brain parenchyma, sort of extending into the right orbit. There's a sort of cystic component to the mass. And on a T1, um, yeah, not tissue mass. We get an enhancement of the solid component. Right, so it's sort of right at the cribriform plate or the orbital roof, and. There's bony remodeling around the mass. There's a chronic mass because you have a lot of bony remodeling around it. Right. And there's a calcified component. Okay. So, so that central area that we thought was low in signal here is actually turns out to be calcification. Right. So yeah, in this location with the calcification, I guess this could be a could be a meningioma. Yeah, it's not really next. I guess it could be, but it's not really in, in around. <clears throat> well, I, I guess it could be. It, it doesn't look like it's meningeal based to me. It looks like this is really centered with within the bone. You could have an infant like the other we saw that can grow through the bone. I haven't seen that in this location, but that's possible. Uh, this turned out to be fibrous dysplasia. Okay. If you were to operate on this, um, how would you uh, how would you do it? I'd send it to Doctor Lucas. <laughs> uh, what's that? I said I would send it to Doctor Yergudis. No, you wouldn't. But uh, I know a guy, the guy that did that did my uh, trigeminal decompression. Uh, he'd go through the nose. Oh, okay. Uh, it's very interesting how they they do that. Uh, um, and, and this is uh, right adjacent to the nose, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that that this would be the best way to go. Instead of going, to, um, I don't see how else you would do it. Okay. So, can you explain? Uh, so uh, think about those things uh, when 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 you uh, uh, see them, um, because uh, uh, you have to find a surgeon that's versed in in, in that procedure. Um, uh, Kelly here in Santa Monica uh, uh, worked with. Uh, uh, the man that um, pretty much invented this uh, system. Great. 
and he's, he was born in Uganda and was chief of uh, neurosurgery at um, um, I'm trying to think of the university. I can't think of it, okay. but it's a, a major university um, Great. at the age of 35. Wow. Sam, what do you, what do you, do you have a Sorry, question? Sorry, this doesn't look like any virus disclosure that I've ever seen. I'm wondering, what are the components of this? I mean, the soft tissue component, it looks like fat almost part of it. Like if I saw this in a pelvis, I'd say this were a dermoid. Isn't that fat? What What is all that? Soft tissue? It's like a mass? What are we looking at well, physiologically? I don't see. Let's go back to the T1. I don't, yeah, this, this is probably the superior part of the orbit. I don't see, I guess there may be a little bit of fat in through here. But no, that's post contrast. So on the T1 weighted image, I really don't see fat in this. Okay, fair enough. So then it's just like some soft tissue components, heterogeneous soft tissue components. Yeah. What is that, like vessels, I guess? This stuff here? The yeah. bright stuff? Cystic uh, yeah, changes? I think this is just cyst. You've got a cystic component to okay. this. Okay, so I just do a cystic component. And just so like, it just has a lot of elements of, uh, and this would be the cystic component here. Okay. There's a lot of bone elements that are just abnormally. Put together. It's like soft tissue, isn't it? Okay. Uh, let's see. Who's next? Who did the... Who did the okay. 15-year-old female with proptosis. So it looks like there is a, a mass within the left uh, ethmoid sinuses, which looks like it's partially calcified. And it's extending all the way up into the left frontal sinus. And it's near, It's thinning the uh, the bone around it. But the bone's intact. The bone's intact. It could be fibrous dysplasia again, I suppose. Fibrous dysplasia. Uh, this looks more like run-of-the-mill fibrous dysplasia that I've seen. It's kind of um, hazy. We call it cotton wool appearance of the bone. Okay, uh, Sahar. Okay, so female palpable mass in the skull. Okay, so it might be like a lucent lesion where the sclerotic margin and the frontal lobia right there. Yeah, same thing. You can see we'll take a sclerotic margin. Okay, it's centered in the Right frontal lobe, there is no bony erosion, it's just expansion. And she's 25. Benign or malignant? Oh, it looks benign. I agree. She has some, yeah, another, yeah, So when you look at solitary lytic skull lesions, I uh, need to think of epidermal or this. E.g., metastatic neuroblastoma, osteomyelitis, and fibrous dysplasias are the most common ones. Multiple lytic lesions, uh, eosinophilic granuloma, leukemia, hyperparathyroidism, multifocal osteomyelitis, and multiple myelomas are the most common. Hey, Thomas, what do you think of this one? A uh, nine-year-old female with skull mass, so there's an expansile lytic lesion in the, so the towards the ape, ape vertex, and uh, looks circumscribed, non-aggressive, and on a CT, yeah, there's a little bit of a bony matrix, so could this also be fibrous dysplasia? On an MR, yeah, sort of areas of 
T2 hyperintensity. So there's a fluid fluid level. So there is extensive vascularity on the angiogram. Uh, so I guess these are two phases. Oh. So this is another fibrous dysplasia. She's just showing it can have a lot of different appearances. That, that, that's a peculiar looking fibrous dysplasia. <laughs> right. So, okay. 52 year old <laughs> with facial mass. So there's a little bit of thickening maybe of the left sphenoid wing or the, uh, or where are we looking? Maybe the anterior left ethmoid area? I'm not sure. That area, yeah. Some thickening there, the bone. And we're cutting through anteriorly here. It looks like, yeah, in the frontal, left frontal sinus, there's a sort of a mass-like lesion. It's involving the uh, bone there. It's sort of... Uh, so what's your differential? Uh, could be an osteoma, could be fibrous dysplasia, could be uh, a meningi... No, you don't see meningiomas there. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of low grade kind of fibrous dysplasia, yeah. We noticed that <clears throat> that it was a benign fibrous lesion. <clears throat> so probably fibrous dysplasia. Okay. Hard mass on lingual surface left mandible pain. So, uh, John, uh, to, to, can you go back? Uh, so, uh, to, that that would be a fibroma. If, uh, right here, it's in the bone. If it's a fibrous uh, lesion, then it's a fibroma. Uh, <clears throat> well, it was thought that this was most likely fibrous dysplasia because it's the most common fibrous lesion in the bone. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well, I, I just... Yeah. Want... All right. Yeah, the bottom line, it was just a benign... As I said, benign fibrous lesion. <clears throat> yeah, that's that, that's the main thing. But really uh, fibroma comes to mind when when, when I hear that. Yeah. And, right. So similar to multiple prior things that we saw, it's kind of um, bony expansion and you know mixed kind of density. Again, it could be fibrous dysplasia. So this was. Uh... Biopsy, and then this is kind of the differential, and finally they decided that this was an oss ossifying fibroma. <clears throat> yes, yeah, very similar to fibrous dysplasia. Okay, uh, Sahar. Okay, 29-year-old uh, male with headache. Okay, maybe there's some opacification of the left frontal sinus. Yeah, it looks like there's a mass like lesion there. Okay, and I see like a benign appearing, well defined mass arising from the left frontal lobe protruding in the frontal sinus. I'm thinking of like osteoma. Okay. What follows the bone marrow signal in T1? There's some, some T2 hyper intensity in the mass. Maybe fibrodysplasia, it can be osteoma. Okay, good. And this turned out to be an ossifying fibroma. <clears throat> okay, uh, Thomas. A 74 year old female with bump on the head. So there's a, an expansile yeah, they're good lesion on in the. Excuse me. I said they're a good historian. 
Uh, the yeah, so extensile mass, right? So frontal parietal convexity, um, sort of extending outward. There's a uh, yeah, there's like a bony matrix partially within the lesion. Very irregular. Right. It's like some thick and trabecular bone. Cut. Yeah, it's like some hyperostosis there. Uh, so an MR. Yeah, there's some hyperostosis of the skull. And there's some non-calcified area here, which we saw on the CT, all this area. And on the MR, right. that's very heterogeneous in signal intensity on a T2. <clears throat> there it is after contrast enhancement. <clears throat> so yeah, there is uh, some peripheral enhancement, not much centrally. Uh, so another fibrous dysplasia. Just look like a lot of different things. Okay, here's another good historian. Jeez. Okay, bump on that. So we have a scout image and a CT, and it looks like there's uh, sort of diffuse uh, abnormality of the skull with thickening and irregularity. It looks like ground glass, areas of ground glass and awesome. some lytic areas, right? <clears throat> okay, and similarly, just an expansile, sort of a heterogeneous skull, bone marrow throughout. It looks like polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. De-differentiated. Much more impressive variety. <clears throat> they are, I think. Yeah, I think it can be. So, um, right, kind of frontal, parietal, uh, temporal area, bone is just also ground glassy. It's not really expansive, this one, yeah, a little bit. This also looks like virus dysplasia. Yeah, that's a 69 year old man. There's an 80 year old female. This also looks like fibrous dysplasia to me. Yeah. Texture, marking texture. Here's a 91 year old male. It's posterior. Mm -hmm. um, much more diffuse. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it could be diffuse fibrous dysplasia, I guess. I mean, it looks benign anyway. Expands how the cortex is intact, looks like. Pageants, okay, sure, right, yeah. And initially, often can be lytic, then it can get sclerotic, or you can have a mixed pattern. But this is... Uh, all three of those are pageants? All three were pageants disease. I think I see a lot of um, thick intrabecium. Hmm. Uh, Sahar. Okay, two months old male, right temporal mass, first six months. Okay, right temporal. Maybe the, okay. On the lateral view, is it better? It looks like there's a loose end lesion with the parodic margins in the right. Right temporal, yeah. 10 months old, I think I'll. Okay, it's kind of like ice stone, T1, heterogeneously enhancing skull based mass. Of EG first, this age. I, I, I agree with you. That would be my first one. So they removed it, and it turned out to be a solitary fibromatosis, or mm. called infantile mild fibromatosis. <clears throat> it's grown severe, but it's actually a very common to infancy. The head looks large. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, uh, Thomas. This is another uh, expansile lesion left. Uh, the frontoparietal cortex. 
Uh, there's uh, thinning of the cortex. There's diffuse enhancement within the mass. Um, circumscribed. There's sort of a cystic component. Yeah, let me just, and this is one patient. This is another patient. This so is, there's a dural tail. Yeah. Bottom right image. Yeah. And there's kind of a differential, another differential of different lesions. And uh, this was also that uh, uh, mild fibromatosis in these patients. They all have this kind of, well, at least these have this kind of sclerotic margin, though it doesn't have to have it. Those are all the same lesion. Okay. <clears throat> 83 year old difficulty chewing. So. It looks like the mandible is uh, abnormal, both the left and right. On the left, maybe it looks like there's a, yeah, sort of, and maybe bilateral. It looks like it's sort of there's an aggressive mass there. Uh, boy, I'm not sure what I'm seeing there. Uh, Taurus mandibular. Oh, yeah, there's this. Yeah, I guess uh, it looks like a little osteochondroma there or something. Taurus mandibularis. Yeah. There's a large lytic lesion of the mandible. I said, what, it's a tenderness? Um, well, my first thought would be, see, it's destroying the bone. I think some of the cortex is actually gone here. So I would think first for the malignancy, my first thought would be a malignancy. Um, well, here the margins look kind of expanded, but more sharply defined. But again, the cortex is destroyed at least. Yeah, it's destroyed there, yeah. I'll start going, yeah. Sahar? Can we go back, John? Yeah. Uh, it said that the patient doesn't have any pain. Uh, why would that be? Well, um, and no tenderness. I guess if it's if it's slow growing. Uh, no, I would say it's fast growing. It's eating up the nerves while it's marching along. Yeah. So you, you figure, I would figure that this is very aggressive. Yeah, I think I think that's right. It's very aggressive, and uh, and it's uh, yeah, the the nerves just aren't functioning. Okay. Sahar. Okay, nine month old female, suspicious starvousness. Okay. Not sure what I'm saying of the lateral skull. Okay, so on the left orbit, it seems that you have this hair on an appearance. Something of like neuroblast, and also in the right sphenoid bone, the same appearance, I think of like metastatic normal and so on first. Yeah, soft tissue masses, left frontal, right sphenoid. Yeah, multiple of collision. Normal stoma. Okay, yeah, on the right side, there's a mass. Only arising from the right kidney or right adrenal gland. Yeah, the adrenal. Yeah. 
Galaxy of Multiple Legion series. I'm sorry, so what did you say this was? I think it's a metastatic neuroblastoma. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good. Thomas. Thomas, are you with us? Oh, sorry, I forgot to. This one. I see that we have a sort of hair on end periosteal reaction, uh, especially at the frontal cortex and sort of throughout the skull base. Yeah, a lot of periosteal reactions. And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, the hair on end periosteal reaction. So I think that can be seen with like thalassemia. Thalassemia should be pretty uniform. And uh, this is a focal soft, tissue. focal soft tissue mass. Here's the, here's what it looks like. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's really very, it looks much more diffuse here. Yes, yeah, so that might be a uh, soft tissue component. So, right. So, uh, yeah, and here's a, really the differential, especially. So, hereditary spherocytosis, anemia, neuroblastoma, enzyme deficiency, in sickle cell, and thalassemia. And this was neuroblastoma. Uh, this is too diffuse also. No, this is the first. Yeah, well, that would be for this, for a skull lesion to look like this. And this <clears throat> I mean, you could certainly put that on the differential, though this wouldn't be a common location for it. Okay. 70-year-old woman with difficulty walking and slurred speech. So there's a uh, large lytic mass originating from the left, looks like parietal bone, um, with a large soft tissue component. It looks pretty aggressive. I'd be worried about some sort of sarcoma, chondrosarcoma maybe. Uh, heterogeneous on T1, MFH. sinuses are filled with some kind of soft tissue or fluid and there is uh, a tooth that's like dislodged up inside of the maxillary sinus. It's like uh, one of those um, periodontoid cysts that the genus Sahara? Okay. <clears throat> ADOGL to look a large of swelling. And there is expansion of the right mandibular canal. This looks like there's a space around the tooth. Maybe some erosion of the bone also. Yeah, basically, you've got marked expansion here with a tooth in the yeah. middle of it. Here's the MR. Yeah. Okay, MR. Okay, it's not simple fluid. It's maybe like multi-lipulated fluid. And we have a lot of edema around it as well. Edema around it. Yeah, so it can be an abscess also or an infected cyst. Yeah. There you go, an infected cyst. Good. <clears throat> Thomas? Uh, 52 year old with vision problems. Um, so there is a, in the right globe, there is a sort of area of thickening at the posterior wall of the globe. So there's an enhancement there also. So I think this appearance could be um, either retinal detachment or Good. Uh, the mass that occurs at the 
Yeah, this oh, one will be a melanoma. Yeah. Okay. So similarly, in this case, it looks like there's a uh, mass in the globe on the left, and a it looks like a little enhancing sort of ill-defined area in the right frontal lobe. Could possibly a melan yeah, a choroid melanoma with Mets. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. So, uh, <clears throat> any, does anybody have any questions about the skull lesions? Okay, well, uh, uh, tomorrow we'll, maybe we'll start on uh, uh, mass lesions of the knee. And then, so we'll see you then. Any questions? Thank you.